Hi guys! So I am filming another recently read video and I'll probably do another one of these soon because I'm almost finished a few other books. I left this one later than I thought I was going to. Um, but yeah, I usually read more than one book at a time so then I'll finish like a few in a week and that's when I'll like film one of these videos. Um, yeah, so I will I will talk about what I finished. I finished all of these like a few weeks ago but been ill, been away, what can you do? Um, okay, so I read another Terry Pratchett book. Um, I'm trying to, because I've read like the majority, I've read more than half of his books, but I want to have read them all. So I'm trying to get through them all. I'm like, the ones that I haven't read, I'm trying to read. Um, and I read another one of the, um, one in the Witches series. Um, this is Weird Sisters, which is actually the first one in the Witches series, if you're going chronologically. Uh, I mentioned in my last one that I read Witches Abroad, which is technically the second one, although Witches Abroad kind of can be pulled out of the series and read at any time because it doesn't really like follow with the storyline. But it does say at the beginning of um, Lords and Ladies, which is the one after Witches Abroad, that you might want to read like this one, like you might want to read them in an order because they sort of what happens in Lords and Ladies follows on somewhat from what happens in Weird Sisters. But Yes, um, not that that's incredibly relevant, but if you're going to start with The Witches, maybe read this one. Um, this is such a good book. Again, it's by Terry Pratchett. I've never really read a Terry Pratchett book that I haven't enjoyed. It's um, sort of comic fantasy, if you don't know what he, can, what he writes, set on the Discworld, which is a planet that he's invented. Um, and yeah, it's different, different stories about different people in the Discworld. Um, quite often with like characters reoccurring in the stories, but not not plot lines necessarily to carry on carrying on. Um, it's not like sequels after sequels. They're just all set on this one planet. Um, the Weird Sisters is loosely based on Macbeth, so um, if you like Macbeth, then this might be one a good one to start with for you. Um, I'm a big fan of Macbeth. It's one of my favourite Shakespeare's. Not that I've read them all, but it's one of the favourite my favourites I've read and um it's quite funny i think like you'll appreciate a lot of the jokes in this one if you have read macbeth not that you need to have read macbeth but there might be some jokes that go over your head a little bit um not out of stupidity or anything just because they they do refer to macbeth but it's really funny just like all other terry pratchett books and i love the witches i think they're some of the funniest characters in the disc world um so i would really really highly recommend Weird Sisters to you, especially if you like a bit of Shakespeare. Um, next, the next few I read were on my Kindle, so I'm just going to have to show you that. Um, which I might have wanted to switch on before I did the video. So I read Medea um, from the Tragedies of Euripides, uh, which is an ancient Greek play. Oh, very low, Barry. Um, <laughs> which is an ancient Greek play. It follows on from the story of Jason and Medea, uh, Jason from the Argonauts. And what um their so what their life um together after he has um basically cheated on her, he's betrayed her. He has uh gone to marry someone else and left her and his two sons, and um, so it's basically about Medea's wrath. Um, I've read Jason and um the Golden Fleece or the Argonautica before I read this, which although written after this like by a few hundred years, it tells. The original story of how Jason and Medea left, uh, met. So my sort of I already had an established opinion of Medea before I read this book, which made me dislike Jason more, because I was definitely on Medea's side after the Argonautica, although I do not think her reaction was justified. Um, there's a lot of murder and um, very much a story of uh, hell hath no fury, like a woman scorned. Um, Yes, yeah, so it's just a tragedy. Uh, a lot of people are dying. Uh, there's a bit of magic in there. It's not incredibly long. If it's just something, it like it wouldn't take you long to read at all. So it's just something good to pick up. And if you like classics, um, then it's definitely it's definitely a must read. Um, I study classics at university, so I can't believe it took me this long to read it. Um, but yeah, it's definitely a must read, and it does sort of explain the backstory at the beginning. So you don't really need to have read the other stories, but it's quite nice, like to sort of know the background of the story if you want to read the Argonautica. It's quite nice just to know more about the myth. 
um, because it's an established myth before Euripides writes his play this is just his sort of he didn't like come up with the whole story this is his spin on the myth um, although this did happen but not to these words um, well, this happened not like historically um, yeah but they thought it was a real story the ancient Greeks um, obviously it's not like reading a modern book because it is very old it's like two and a half thousand years old so it's not like reading modern literature reading classical literature so you have to bear that in mind when you're reading it and it's definitely worth it's definitely worth giving classical um plays and uh poems and novels a shot but it is it's a good play i did enjoy it and um, it's not it's not terpaccia i'm not gonna lie but it's a good play um next i finally finally finished game of thrones um which is ridiculous because i started reading it well not reading it i i got the audiobook um, and i started listening to it at the beginning of this year um but my ipod fell down a toilet so for a few months i wasn't listening to it so i took like quite a big break from listening to it and since i got my kindle i put it on my kindle and finally finished listening to it um, and i was not disappointed it was one of those books where although i was enjoying it i wasn't sure at different moments whether i would rush to buy the sequel there were some times where i was like oh, i'll probably not get the sequel straight away other moments where i was like okay i'm gonna need to know what happens as soon as this one's over and kind of near the end i was a bit like nah, i'll probably wait to buy the sequel i'll read something else first but then just the ending just like the last like i don't know a few pages but like last half hour last hour of the audiobook i was like oh my god <laughs> i was hooked i uh it just all sort of culminated the whole story sort of had this amazing um ending point it was an amazing ending and i straight away downloaded the sequel on my kindle so i'm going to be reading that i have started reading it um but just the ending was such a cliffhanger that i was like what is going to happen um yeah it was a really good book game of thrones i mean i'm sure you've heard enough people talk about it because it's been a long, around for a long time and the tv series has been out and everything but um yeah there's just there's so much goes on in game of thrones there's so many characters at first it's really hard to keep up with who all the characters are but you do get the hang of it don't worry it's such a long book that you kind of have to i think my favorite character was a uh, uh, either Danny Targaryen or um, Jon Snow. Well, I did love Ned Stark. Um, yeah, so, and Brandon. Okay, there's lots of good characters. But yeah, <laughs> I the, it, really hard to keep up with at first. But you don't worry, you will get the hang of it. I promise, I promise. Um, there's almost as many characters as there is in Harry Potter. Um, yeah, and it's um, sort of fantasy almost in a sort of medieval esque world but it's not like a world like ours it's it's a fantasy world um although there's not an incredible amount of magic in the first book sort of the more magic gets introduced it builds up it is a long book and it's good because then you get you get to know the characters really well the way it's set out because it does it um by character so you get like from John's perspective from Arya's perspective from Sansa from Ned from Kathleen like that and it just jumps from character to character um, and yeah you do get to know them all really well so it's quite a nice introduction I imagine quite a lot is going to happen in the second book I'm expecting a lot from the second book um, but I do think it's a really good series and I would recommend it to anyone that likes him um, fantasy i think as well do know that it's quite um i've lost the word but if you're offended easily there's a lot of sort of um sexually explicit scenes not necessarily nice ones there's a bit of um like rape and that kind of thing it's not really a children's book it's, def it's definitely adult fantasy and um, so do watch out for that but it's um it's it's complete if it's not if that's not usually your kind of thing it's completely tolerable it's not over the top it it all it's done very tastefully tactfully tastefully um just in the way that it does fit in with the storyline it makes sense it's not just a throw in these like um explicit scenes for like a bit of a split like just to have them there they do work with the story um, but yeah, I do think everyone should read it. <laughs> yeah. So um, those are the past. Those are the last two books I read. Um, 
and yeah I will probably be back with one of these very soon because I've almost finished another few books so I hope this was of some help I hope I wasn't too rambly I'm still a little bit ill so you'll have to excuse me it's probably just my brain's a little bit delirious I can't find my words very well um damn mosquito bites um yeah so the the <laughs> I will see you all again very very soon